Welcome to Hey Therapist. I'm your host, Leslie Ross. With me is my producer, Jay Wesley Lindley. Let's get mental. Hello, everybody. Daylight savings time is upon us. And the onset is here. And ugh, we all hate it, right? Even though we gained an hour. Oh, man, those clocks falling back to standard time. It feels rough. And even though in the spring, more onset of negative health consequences, when they fall back, it can also create some consequences because that master clock in our brain, our circadian rhythm, that roughly 24 hour cycle, it determines when we're sleepy, when we're awake, those patterns change as we age and they change with time changes, which is why some people experience the time change differently. Our circadian rhythms also affect things like heart rate, blood pressure, stress hormones, and metabolism. And that morning light, well, it resets the rhythm. In the evening, our melatonin levels begin to increase, triggering drowsiness. Too much light in the evening delays that increase, and we get out of sync, which is what happens in the spring. And lack of sleep really impacts that frontal lobe, that part of your brain that controls so many things, the big one being our impulse control. And when we don't sleep, our ability to make good decisions and control your impulses is impacted. There was a study that found work accidents caused by human error increased more than 18% following the springtime change, and slightly less than 5% following the fall time change. So we have that, I guess, until spring. And the switch to standard time can have an impact on those shift workers who end up working that extra hour that day when the clock turns back. So that really can impact some of our workers out there that work in mills and plants and those types of things work overnights. Researchers in the University of Colorado have examined vehicle accident data over a 10-year period and found a 6% increase in fatal car crashes in the week after people reset their clock. So be extra cautious as we change those clocks back. Earlier sunsets in the afternoon mean darker driving conditions in the evening and a higher incidence of accidents on the road. And when we don't receive enough sunlight, our bodies fail to produce enough serotonin. So you may feel an energy slump, you may have more mood swings, and it could put you at a higher risk for depression. Studies have found that once people set their clocks back in the fall, there was an 11% increase in depression immediately after standard time begins. And that's a change we don't see in the spring. And some of that onset is to seasonal affective disorder or SAD. And SAD affects about 5% of the U.S. population, and it's triggered by shorter, darker, colder days. It affects women more than men, and our kiddos can also be affected by it. Sadly, SAD can last around 40% of the year, so it lasts basically until the time changes back and we get that sun. And it's usually the most challenging in January and February when it's colder and darker, and we're all trying to adjust. Dr. Crystal Lewis of the National Institute of Mental Health said seasonal affective disorder has been linked to a biochemical imbalance in the brain, which most things are, right? We know that. And people experience a shift in their internal clock, that circadian rhythm again, that causes them to be off schedule with their daily life. And routine is what keeps us, well, as normal as we can get. So what puts you at a higher risk category? An individual with SAD may be more likely to have a family history of SAD or depression or bipolar disorder. Those who live in colder climates to the north or the south of the equator also have a greater chance of experiencing seasonal affective disorder. This is due to less daytime light during those winter months. Sleep is also very disrupted during both changes, but that an extra hour... That extra hour of sleep sounds great, but it can cause us to struggle for those early mornings and falling asleep at night. Stroke risk does go up. Another study found that moving the clocks back or ahead an hour temporarily increased the risk of strokes. The most common types of strokes that are caused by a clot blocking blood flow to the brain, likely thanks to that disruption, again, in that circadian rhythm. Hormone regulation may also be disrupted. Your body is used to producing melatonin when it becomes dark outside. If you tend to go to bed early, if now it's still light outside, so let's say it's the springtime, it's still light outside, 
it impacts your ability to produce it. When we don't have enough melatonin, it can lead to other issues like sleep disorders, mood swings, anxiety, elevated estrogen or progesterone levels. It also isn't uncommon to see that spike in heart-related issues right after the clock changes. Research has found that an increase in heart attacks and strokes within those first two weeks after the clock changes is the highest, with the highest risk being the first three weekdays after the switch. Since you may not be sleeping as much, you may have more stress, and this could increase your heart rate. It could increase your blood pressure. It increases the production of the stress hormone cortisol. Great news is that after those first week, we do get a little better adjusted and that risk goes down. Daylight savings time can also slow our metabolism and produce hunger hormones. And this happens because your body isn't receiving the right amount of sleep. And sadly, those hunger hormones aren't producing those cravings for grilled chicken and veggies, because that would be amazing. Give me all of those hormones. It usually triggers the high calorie cravings. We want those sweets. We want those carbs. We want those things that can hurt our weight regulation as well. So people do tend to put on more weight during the winter. And a lot of it is because of poor eating habits, less exercise, but sometimes it's just those hormone changes that can create that. And I've mentioned sleep a lot, so let's talk about it. An hour doesn't seem like that much and the clocks change. Our routines don't. Work schedules and school and all the things start at the same time as they always have. So studies show about one in three U.S. adults sleep less than the recommended seven plus hours nightly anyway. And more than half of U.S. teens aren't getting their recommended eight plus nights a week. But when that time changes, it also increases our sleep deprivation for adults. And again, that is linked with a lot of negative health outcomes, including that stroke and impaired performance. Lack of sleep may cause you to feel more fatigued, which can cause you not to exercise as much. So our exercise routine may suffer. With lack of sleep and exercise, your body can produce those higher levels of cortisols and higher level of cortisol can result in that rapid weight gain, muscle weakness, higher blood pressure. So we may need to adjust our workout time for maximum sunshine. You may have to switch to taking your walks in the morning when there is light instead of the evenings that you've been doing because it's dark now when you get home from work. Also, when we don't get enough sleep, we can be a bit more irritable. I know I am when I'm sleepy and we get a little quick to react. So it can create situations where we're arguing with our friends, our families, our coworkers, or you may just be too tired to do anything. You may not want to argue. You may not want to drive. You may not want to engage in social events. Just thinking about having to engage in those things or attend functions, which may create more stress, which just increases that cycle that we've been talking about. If you're in an at-risk population, you may be impacted more. So let's talk about who our at-risk populations are. First, it's our kiddos. School time doesn't change just because the clocks did. And some of our kids are gonna experience sleep deprivation issues when you spring those clocks forward. Their bodies aren't gonna be accustomed to it being light, close to bedtime, and they may not be able to fall asleep when they need to. Lack of sleep leads to sleepiness, that increase in mood swings, and having a hard time with concentration. When we fall back like we just did, they aren't getting enough sunlight because they are inside most of the day. And this decreases their serotonin, making them also more susceptible to depression or mood swings. Like our kiddos, our older adults are also experiencing sleep disruption issues. It's especially important for our older generation to refrain from driving when sleep deprived. That frontal lobe, again, that gives us that impulse, that processing, all of those things, that frontal lobe won't be able to process information fast enough, which results in slower reaction time and can increase the risk of traffic accidents. It's also very important to adhere to meal and medication times. Sometimes we get confusion with our older generation because they are used to doing things when it's light and when it's dark. They may be used to eating and taking meds when the sun rises. They may be used to eating and taking meds when the sun's going down, when it's starting to get dark. This could really throw off their schedule and create more issues with their health. And I touched on it earlier, but it's important to note that if you do have higher blood pressure, then 
our savings time going forward, going back can give you higher, even higher blood pressure because it can impact your sleep. All of those things, it can increase your heart rate and your blood pressure, making you more at risk for strokes. So if you do have any underlying health conditions, it is vital that you keep an eye on that. Check your check your vitals, check all of those things, possibly even talking to your doctor about this if you notice big changes, big fluctuations. So what do we do? How do we handle it better? Well, we wanna be sure we have a good established bedtime routine. And if you don't already have one, now is the time. Let's create a good bedtime routine. Having that routine will signal your body when it's time to wind down and help you recognize that time change a little bit easier. A relaxing routine could involve putting down those electronic devices, especially that blue light. We know we're on those phones and watching TV, but if you're struggling, it's real important to put those down. We want to avoid heavy exercise, heavy meals, alcohol, caffeine, any of those things right before bed as well. And you also need consistency and stick to your routine and try to avoid those naps. That that time change can really throw us off and we may need that nap or think we need that nap, but that nap is actually gonna end up being detrimental for you. We wanna get as much sunshine as we can too. It can reduce your risk of depression by up to 20%. So take your work breaks outside if you can. If it's chilly, if it's whatever, sit in your car, back it out where the sun is shining into your windshield Light through a window is better than no light at all. And if you can't get that, there are light therapy lights that you can buy and sunlight lamps that can also help. I have an alarm clock that I love because it gradually lights up to mimic sunrise. And it's very helpful for me because I have a really hard time waking up or getting out of bed when the room is dark. So having that that alarm clock that lights up that, that slowly brings light into my room that kind of makes it feel like sunrise, even though it's not, it really helps me a lot. And I know that there's a lot of studies out there that show that it could, could help you as well. And if you can get that, and if you need that light, that light in the morning can really reset your internal clock and it improves your alertness. Open your curtains if you can. If you live in an area where it's safe to have your curtains open so that you can get that daylight coming in, do that. Get that natural light. 20 to 30 min minutes of sunshine a day really will help set that internal clock. And it's really great if you can get that in the morning. Touched on caffeine earlier. I'm going to talk about it again. Avoid caffeine at least later in the day. Caffeine blocks certain receptors in your brain that make you feel tired. Even if you're not feeling that up effect, even if you're not feeling energized or all of those things from the caffeine, the, the caffeine is still in your system. So the closer to bedtime that you have it, the more likely it can cause you issues of falling asleep and it can affect your quality of sleep. Alcohol does the same thing. And then set your meal times and stick to it. If you normally eat at six, continue to eat at six because your six and the clock six are very different and it's going to feel different, but try to keep that pattern because it can help you rest better. It helps you establish that rhythm again. It helps keep your body in check. And on a final note, remember to set all of your clocks. Most of our clocks are automatic now. We've got the phones, we've got the cars, we've got all the things that usually do things automatically, unless you have a car where you don't know how to set it and then you just ride it out for a few months or a watch that you've had forever that you're that may be digital that you're not real sure how to set back and you're just like, okay, I know if I wear it during this time frame, I need to subtract an hour or add an hour. For the most part, we wanna be sure that we're resetting all of those clocks that we look at all the time. And you may not even register that you check that clock on your stove that often, but reset it, reset your wall clocks, reset your microwaves, reset your coffee pot, all of those things. And that way everything is on the same time frame. So when you look down, your body may not feel like it's a time, but your brain is going to register what time it is. So I hope that helps. I know this is a short one, but I just wanted to get it out there to help everyone adjust to the time change. Welcome to fall, everyone. It's going to start being cold and it's gonna be dark, and we're just gonna to stick to our routines, and we're gonna find the things that bring us joy so we can stave off any of those mental health issues that we know we have when we are struggling. So thanks for listening. See you next time. For my producer, Jay Lindley, I'm Leslie Ross. Thank you all for joining us. Please send any questions or comments through the website, heytherapist.com. 
or email help at heytherapist.com. They may be featured on the show anonymously. Hey Therapist is an SEOK radio production and is for your entertainment purposes only. Thank you for joining us. Make good choices.